Hello, this is Ms. Pat from San Luis Public Library. This week in Science Scouts, we're going to talk about Earth Day, which is on Thursday on the 20th, and we're going to discuss water pollution this year. Right? Well, today we're going to do a special thing. We're going to read two books. Okay, so our first book is going to be Crab Cake by Andrea Sawumi. Crabs don't usually make cakes, but you can eat a crab cake. But he is going to make crab cakes or we'll make a cake. Under the sea where sunlight touches sand lies a place that's home to many incredible creatures. Clownfish hides in the stinging anemone. Manta ray gets cleaned. Tangs swim in schools. Sea turtle holds her breath. Scallop does loop-de-loops. A lot of different animals, huh? And crab bakes cakes. Seahorse pretends to be seaweed. Spiny lobster looks for a new home. Parrotfish crunches coral and poops sand. Dolphin blows bubble rings. Pufferfish puffs up. Toadfish sings. Octopus hides in a coconut. Moray eel pops out of her cave. And crab bakes cakes. Snapper eats and eats and eats and eats. The venomous lionfish does whatever she pleases. And crab bakes cakes. So life goes on under the sea. Until one night, there's a big splash. You see the boat? Parrotfish freezes, snapper freezes, shark freezes, pufferfish freezes, spiny lobster freezes, Seahorse freezes, octopus freezes, sea turtle freezes, dolphin freezes, manta ray freezes, even lionfish freezes. And crab. What's he gonna do? Crab bakes a cake. What's going on? Shh. Did Crab just bake a cake? Shh. Hi. For how long? I don't know. Crab did. Crab baked a cake. Can I have some? Sure. May I? Of course. Can I have the part with the shell? Of course. They all come out. Finally, everybody comes together. Ugh, it's everywhere. I was scared. It was loud. That was awful. What now? Ooh, you're okay. Glad we're all here. We have to help out kelp. What do we do now? This cake is good. We've got to think of something. All right. Anyone have any ideas? Looks like they got an idea. I like the 
octopus raised his hand. So what are they gonna do? Lobster lifts. Snapper shoves. Clownfish rolls. Manta rays move. Octopus inks. Sharks carry. Dolphins drag. Clam encourages. Turtles tow. And sea lions lug. What are they doing? Everyone helps. And it says, come get your junk. Because that's all the stuff they dumped in the water. Under the sea, where sunlight still touches sand, incredible creatures go on swimming, playing, and doing what they do. Especially crab. So all those people dumped that stuff in the water and the animals didn't like that very much, did they? So they put it all back out on the land, right? To help, every, all the animals helped. Now that doesn't really happen in real life. You wanna know what happens in real life? Unfortunately, this is what happens. Duffy's lucky escape by Ellie Jackson and Liz Old Meadow. Okay, so this is a sea turtle and he also lives in the water. And this is a true story about the plastics in our ocean. Once off on an island far, far away in the sun lived a beautiful sea turtle called Duffy. She happily swam in the warm, clear waters of a coral reef searching for tasty jellyfish and shimmering shoals of fish to eat. She liked to dive down to the sandy seafloor to munch on waving beds of delicious seagrass. And then she would flow gently up to the surface to bask in the hot tropical sun. And these pink things, those are jellyfish. One day, a wild and ferocious storm whipped up the sea into towering waves, which crashed down on poor Duffy. The storm raged on, sending her spinning and tumbling away from her home, pushing her far out to sea. After the storm, the sea became calm once more. Duffy found herself surrounded by strange shadows and unknown creatures that slid past her in the dark and murky waters. Duffy was hungry and began her search for food, desperately trying to find the rocks and reefs of home. Flashes of color started to dance and twirl in front of her, like the shimmering fish that she remembered from her own coral reef. Slowly at, fast, slowly at first, then faster and faster, she chased these colorful flashes, snapping them up in her mouth and gulping them down. So what are they? Strange objects were floating around Duffy and looked like jellyfish in the gloomy waters. They had short tentacles and balloon shaped bodies and they wallowed slowly in the drifting currents. Duffy thought they were food and reached out through the water to swallow their slimy bottles, bodies into her rapidly filling tummy. Okay, so she thinks she's eating jellyfish. And she thinks these little wrappers up here are little fish. For a long time, Duffy floated and rested on the surface as she was starting to feel strange inside her shell. Her tummy was hurting her and a light bubbly feeling kept gurgling up through her body. She longed for some cool seagrass to soothe her aching tummy, but she couldn't dive deep enough to reach any. She didn't understand what was happening to her as her once powerful flippers felt weak 
and her body kept pulling her back to the surface. Duffy heard a loud roaring and whining noise circling around her. It scared and confused her so much that she didn't know which way to go. Suddenly she was pulled backwards then lifted up high out of the water and into the fisherman's boat. She lay quiet and still, frightened by the noise and the smell of these people who had rescued her. The fisherman had seen turtles like this before, floating and not able to dive, and they knew Duffy needed help. The kind fisherman slowly poured seawater over Duffy so she could stay cool on their journey to the safety and peace of the turtle hospital. At the turtle hospital, there were lots of blue tanks filled with clear running water, which was home to other sick turtles. Gentle hands cleaned and scraped the seaweed from her shell. Duffy was fed fresh fish, octopus and jellyfish to build up her strength, but still the pain inside her tummy grew. Duffy was placed on a special bed with vets looking after her. As she drifted off to sleep, she dreamed of the beach where she was born. While she slept, she had an x-ray taken, which showed that the food she had eaten after the storm was not colorful fish or jellyfish, but plastic bags and bits of old drink bottles and crisp wrappers which people had thrown away and washed into the sea or had been left on the beach. The plastic garbage floating in the sea had tricked Duffy to look like food and she had gobbled it up, which then made her very sick. The vets had to operate on Duffy to remove the plastic from her stomach. Otherwise, she would die. That's a good, huh? Duffy was lucky. And as she started to recover, she grew stronger and heavier again. Her shell started to shine, her flippers were powerful, and her body was healthy. She was moved into a large tank with creatures that she remembered from her reef. Darting, colorful shoals of tropical fish, large and lumbering sharks, and gliding rays. Duffy felt relaxed, confident in her strong swimming and graceful diving, and she enjoyed being with her new friends in the aquarium while the visitors watched and smiled. plastic in there. Finally, the day came when Duffy was fully recovered and ready to be released back to her home. People gathered on the beach to watch Duffy being returned to the sea. The children eagerly peered into her crate to see her and the new cameras took the news cameras took the pictures for the whole country to see. Duffy was carried down to the beach where she looked around her at the two lines of cheering people and at the shimmering ocean that she remembered so well. And then the strong hands released her and finally she was free. So here she is, just gonna go back out into the water. She scrambled over the sand, instinct steering her down the beach into the warm water. Duffy happily swam back to her home among the reef and the seagrass, free of the plastic that people had put into the sea, free to chase and hunt, to swim and to dive once again. Okay. And then it says, the end. Thank you for reading about Duffy's amazing true story. Okay, so unfortunately that is what happened. So we're gonna talk a little bit about pollution. And there are three types of pollution. Okay, pollution is when the environment around you is contaminated or made dirty. And it could be by waste or chemicals or other harmful substances you guys drink plastic bottles all the time and you don't think there's anything wrong with them and there's not. We can use plastic. We use plastic to drink all the time. But then if we throw it in the water, you just saw what happens with Duffy. It's not so good, right? 
So this is considered harmful, even though it's not harmful to you, it's gonna be harmful to the other animals in the world. So there are three main types of pollution. There's air pollution, right? And that could be from planes and factories and cars and even volcanoes make air pollution. All the time you see smoke up in the air, that's gonna be air pollution. It's putting something into the air, okay? There's water pollution. And you can see that picture at the bottom. People throw things on the beach, they drop a cup, they drop a water bottle, they drop a wrapper. They say, yeah, it's just one thing, it's no big deal. But if everybody in the world did that, we're gonna see what happens, All right? And then there's land pollution. Now these garbage trucks are collecting are the guys that collect the garbage from your house, right? Or from the stores or from the restaurants. And they all gotta put that garbage somewhere. So we've, we've got what we call a landfill and they all get dumped right there and then they kind of bury it, but it's underneath the dirt. So water pollution can be caused by industries dumping things into the water, could be caused by fertilizer washing into the rivers, could be by oil spills or oil dumping, could be trash that's thrown into the water or near the water, right? And it can cause animals to die and it can make people sick. And if you look at this, this is the turtle. He's caught up in a um, plastic thing. So this holds six soda bottles, but he swam through it and he got too big to get out of it. This one's caught inside of a, I don't know if that's a plastic bag or a plastic bottle. And there's Duffy. Duffy's eating that plastic bag. It's not a jellyfish, huh? All right, and this one got his head caught in some plastic. That's a little sea lion. Eventually he's gonna get too big and that thing is gonna choke him. Right? This is some factory is throwing all the dirty water out into the lake and the river. That's not good. This white pelican is all covered in oil and he can't fly anymore because that oil makes his feathers too heavy. Okay, and this green stuff, that's not grass. That's the green stuff growing on top of the lake or the pond or the river and all the fish have died. And that's because all the fertilizer got washed into the river or into the pond. Right? There are 2 billion people in that world that drink polluted water every single day because that's all they have. They can't go into their house and turn on the water and have clean water come out. This is what they do. They go down to the nearest water hole and they fill up a bucket. Now look at what's all around those kids. Would you want to drink that water? All right, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch is made up of plastic garbage that's thrown in the ocean or could be thrown on beaches and then the wind blows it in. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch is twice as big as Texas and it's in the Pacific Ocean, just floating there in between California and Hawaii. Okay, and if you look at this picture, you can see that there's a boat of people in the middle of this trash. All this trash is floating. There's there, boating. Okay, so they're on their boat. They're floating on top of the ocean. Most people think it's just one water bottle I'm throwing away or I'm dumping or, you know, I don't feel like walking all the way back up to that garbage can all the way back there on the beach. So I'm just going to drop this here and I'll, I'll get it later. But then the wind's going to blow it into the water. Right. And the currents in the water, the waves and whatnot, they bring all the plastic that ends up in the ocean all to one spot. And this is it. Okay, so if you look at this gray Pacific garbage patch, this is the United States right here from California all the way up to Washington. Do you see how wide this thing is? This is as, this is as high as our country. It's almost as big as our country right now. From one thing, if everybody just throws one thing on the beach, that's what's gonna happen. Okay, I can't play this. But if you guys are really interested, this is a very cool video and I am going to promote it here. I see how one drop of pollution can spread. Go to this website, the HTTPS steampoweredfamily.com. Right? And you go, it's gonna help you a whole list of things to do for Earth Day, but look for the, go down. I think it's about number eight. It says how pollution spreads. And it talks about magic milk, which was really cool. And I would have loved to send that home, but sending milk home doesn't always work. And I've only gotten it to work a couple of times, but I love this video, okay? Because they put milk in a little dish and they put the blue and green in there to make the earth. 
and they put in dish detergent, which makes the blue and the green mix together. But then one drop of red food coloring, which would be one plastic cup or one bottle. Watch what happens. Okay, you go to this website, you watch what happens with one drop and see what happens to the world, okay? So how can we clean our waters? Well, first throw out the garbage in the right places, right? Don't put it on the ground and say, I'll get it later, right? Don't throw it in the water. Clean up the beaches or the rivers when you see garbage near them, right? Somebody else drops and put on some gloves, pick up the stuff, put it in the right spot. But if you need to drink water, if you're out hiking and you're out of water and you're lost and you need water and it looks like that dirty cup down here on the bottom, you don't wanna drink that. There are people that will because that's the only water they have and they don't have a way to clean it. But you really do need to filter it and boil it. Otherwise you're gonna be sick. Those 2 billion people that are drinking this dirty water, they end up with a lot of stomach problems. Hey, a lot of bathroom problems. They, they just, they, some of them end up dead. Okay, so you wanna filter it. You wanna remove the dirt and then boiling it will kill the bacteria that's in there. So we are going to do this today. Now, if you guys come into the library, you're gonna get a kit with a lot of different things in there, okay? So our filters could be a napkin, a wipe, or a coffee filter. You will get two parts of a bottle. Okay, I've already cut them in half. You can go like this, because we're gonna pour the dirty water in up here, and hopefully you're gonna get clean water down here. Now I am gonna tell you, do not drink this, okay? Even though we are going to filter this, do not drink this. Because I'm not telling you to boil it and there's going to be dirt stuff going in here. So we don't want to drink this. You could, however, use it to water your plants, but really we're just gonna look to see how to get it from dirty water to stuff that looks like it's clean. And like I said, if you're ever lost and you have nothing to drink and you really have to do this, this would be survival, right? Um, what is it, Survival Island? So at least you'll know, but don't drink it today, okay? So you're gonna end up with two and you're gonna go like this. And you will get a cup and a rubber band. So the cup is to put your water in. I've already got water in this one. You will get a little bag of dirt. You'll also get a bag of sand. Don't put the sand in there. Put the dirt in, okay? Now, I still got a lot of sand left, but I definitely got my dirty water. Nobody wants to drink this, right? So I got enough sand, I could. I got enough dirt, I could do this again. All right, but you guys can definitely see this stuff. Now that a lot of the dirt is floating at the top. Okay, but you can still see it at the bottom. You don't wanna drink this. So we're gonna figure out how to try and get this to look like clean water again. Okay. So take this and decide, do you wanna try the wipe? the filter or the napkin. You can do a couple of different times. Just gotta change what's on the bottom. All right, I'm gonna take the wipe and I'm gonna fold it in half so it's kind of doubled. Okay, and I'm gonna put it on this. I'm gonna take my rubber band And I'm going to put it on. You might need help with this one. I want to make sure I get it all the way around so that none of my dirt actually comes through. Okay. So 
what is still going to come through this? Okay. Oops, don't want to put it in that one. I want to put it in bottom of my thing here. Now I got to get the dirt off of that. Okay. We're still going to need to have something to filter the dirt because if I just pour the dirt in there, it's just going to kind of plug up. So we're going to put our sand. Sand is the skinniest stuff we have right here out of all the stuff I'm giving you. Okay. So, and again, I didn't use up all the sand, so you can or you can't, depending on what you want to do. Okay. I have, now this particular bag I took has oatmeal. Some of the bags are going to have rice. I'm going to put those on top. Okay. Now, if you're out in the woods, you could put little rocks down here. Okay, so you'd have sand, little rocks, big rocks, or you could do grass, lots and lots of grass, rocks, and then sand. Okay, again, I didn't use it all, so I can do this a second time if I wanna try one of my other filters. Okay. And then, I'm gonna give you guys Just dump them in a cup because it makes it easy to pour. These are a kind of a combination of beans and macaroni instead of big rocks. Okay. So now I kind of got lots and lots of layers. I'm gonna stick it in here. And let's try my water. Okay, you see how dirty my water is, right? Now, some of the dirt stayed in the cup. That's okay. But you see all that black stuff up on the top? Okay, that's still the dirt. Now, the water, and I'm sure you guys can see it, right? You guys can see the water shaking back and forth. Now, I don't know if you can see that it is dripping down here. So the water is going to start going through the big stuff, and that's going to hold a lot of the dirt. Then it's going to soak through the oatmeal or the rice. Okay, then it's going to soak through the sand. And hopefully it's going to be clear stuff that comes out the bottom. And that it's not going to be as dirty as it was before. Now, if you want, if you guys have access to it, you guys could use things like gravel. Okay, that could be your big rocks instead of using the noodles. Remember, you're going to have a couple of different things that you guys can use here. You can use the noodles, but if you have rocks outside and you want to use those instead of the noodles and the beans, you can use that. If you want to use the coffee filter. Now this use, people use this in coffee makers sometimes, and it filters out the coffee grinds so that they don't get the, um, they don't get the coffee stuff floating around in their cup of coffee that looks like this because coffee grinds kind of look like this, right? And they don't want this floating in their coffee. So to use a coffee filter, so maybe that'll work instead of the baby wipe. Maybe the napkin will work. Okay, we use it to clean things. So you see my water. Now this might take a while. You might have to put it down and just wait a while because you can still see, I still got a lot of water up here. It still hasn't soaked all the way down, right? You can still see my water up there. But it'll be a while and it will come down. Now, remember, do not drink this water. You saw what was in there. That was dirt. And yes, I started with clean water. And yes, I put dirt in it. But I put dirt in it. Don't drink it. Okay? Even if it does look clean. But this is how we can filter the water. Okay? This is how some people might have to do it. But not everybody has all the things they need to filter the water. So you might have an empty water bottle while you're out there in the woods. 
but you might not have all the filters. Not everybody walks around with this stuff. I have seen this stuff done with a sock. Somebody put a sock over it and they kept the sock there and they filled it up with different things from the ground and they poured the water through. It was still kind of brown water, but they didn't have all this dirt stuff floating through it. It still kind of looked yucky, but it was a little bit cleaner, okay? So this is one of the ways that we could clean water. We get our water from the water treatment plant. We get the water from the rivers and then we have to run them through a lot of machines to get all the yucky stuff out before we can turn on our water faucet and fill up our cup of water. But not everybody in the world has that. Okay, so this Earth Day, think about what are you guys doing with your plastic, right? And think about the people and think about the animals and what's happening to them because we're throwing the stuff into the water, okay? So have a good day. Hope you enjoyed this. Bye.